And uh, as a public announcement, uh, Commissioner Strohmeyer sends his regrets. He has a family emergency, so he is unable to be with us today. Um, and we only have the room until 3 o'clock today because there is going to be court held in this room. Um, so we will have to end for sure by 3 o'clock today. Is there any public comment on items not on the agenda? Perfect. Good afternoon. My name is DJ Smith. I'm here today uh, to talk about a couple comments that were made last week. Um, as an active uh, community member, um, like I said, I'm here to address a disheartening comment made by one of the members of this board. Um, last week, a member of the board spoke directly towards the Realtors Association by, by saying, developers in the realtor lobby, please do not ever bring a development before me without a land, with land much bigger than this without mitigating for the loss of ag land. And as a member of that realtor association, I'm here to speak uh, for myself today, but to inform you and make it crystal clear, the realtor association does not and will not ever actively promote an individual development, ever. That is just not a philosophy that we go by. We go by promoting policies the general policy of land use. So that is what our avenue, and I felt, felt like it was very disheartening and um, disingenuous uh, to say a comment like that. Um, another important piece is housing does bring a lot to our community, and throwing that by the wayside I felt was really sad. Furthermore, um, I felt like the comment last week was an attack on the integrity of the realtors of this community, a body of Missoula County citizens that work to um, to work hard to make Missoula better by helping people with one of the most stressful times of their lives. A, a body of Missoula citizens that advocate for attainable housing, a commitment, of, a commitment from a group of professionals that give back to the community day in and day out. A prime example of this is the efforts for More for Kids, which next week will be giving $21,000 to kids in our community that are in need. Um, and over a seven year period, that same group has raised over $250,000 for that group. So my intentions today was to correct the assumption made by a member of this board and to bring it to light that the realtor lobby actually works more for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment on items not on today's agenda? All right. Our current claims list uh, includes claims received as of April 5th, 2019 until April 11th, 2019 by our office, and they total $2,924,531.95. And as always, you can go to our agenda and click on those claims and see um, what it is specifically that totals up to that amount. We only have one hearing today uh, on the Missoula area mapping project. Uh, due to Commissioner Strohmeyer's absence, he would like to be in on the commissioner discussion of this topic, and so we will not be making a decision today. We will be continuing the hearing, but we will be um, accepting all the public comment um, and taking that into the consideration when we do have the discussion. Um, commissioner Strohmeyer, of course, will be watching this hearing and taking into account all the comment that we do here today so that we can make a decision in the future. Um, with that, I will open the Missoula Area Mapping Project hearing with a staff report. Yeah, th thank you. Um, first of all, uh, wel welcome to the public hearing on the Missoula Area Mapping Project. Uh, this is potentially the last presentation we will do in this project um, uh, in terms of a uh, in, in terms of uh, it being a draft. So um, perhaps we'll do more once it's adopted, but. I'm Andrew Hagemeyer, and I'm uh, the project manager on the project. I'm a planner with uh, Missoula County Community and Planning Services. And I'm Christine Desenzo, also a, a project planner on this project with Community and Planning Services. Yeah, and we, we're the main staff that worked on the project, but there's a bunch of other staff that were involved uh, who are back at our office, maybe watching on the TV. So, hey, guys, um, thanks for your help. Uh, before we really get into the presentation, uh, I wanted to give a special thanks to all the community members who have participated in this project. We've um, had a ton of outreach. Uh, all of your input was important. All of your in input was listened to. I'd really like to thank everyone for participating. 
I'd like to give a special thanks to the Land Use Technical Committee that helped us earlier on in this project. Uh, they were really important in identifying existing conditions and land use trends in our area. Special thanks to the Planning Board. They did a phenomenal job wading through a ton of public comment in an orderly fashion and giving each comment due consideration. So way to go, Planning Board. And a special thanks to the County Commissioners for your support on this project. Without you guys, this would have been, uh, well, we wouldn't have had the resources to get this done. So thank you very much. So this is what we're talking about today, is the Missoula area land use smell element. And this is going to be an amendment. We're asking the county commissioners consider it for adoption as an, as an amendment to the Missoula County growth policy that was adopted in 2016. It's more than just a land use map. It has a land use map, but it also has land use designations within it that describe the different land use types in the map. And there's also a vision for how we want our community to grow over the next 20 years within it. So here are kind of the things we wanted to discuss real quick in our presentation, some of the key phases of the project, some of the key concepts within the land use map. We want to hit some highlights of the new comments that we've received. Uh, we'll go through the staff report and quickly touch on the draft resolution. So two years, four months, seven days. That's how long I've worked for Missoula County. That's also how long we've been working on the Missoula area mapping project. I, the day I started, Karen Hughes, the assistant director, plopped a project folder on my desk and said, um, this is going to be what you're working on. So over that, we've had, over that time period, we've had a number of different phases of the project. The first phase was the project foundation. In that phase, what we really did was, we, it was the plan to plan, trying to figure out how we were going to complete this project? What were the planning approaches we were going to use? What planning theories were we going to use? We researched the peer communities, how they went about their planning processes. So places like Bend, Oregon, Flagstaff, Arizona, Fort Collins, Colorado, what their plans look like. We looked to um, plans that were nationally known for their transformative ideas, places like um, Charlotte, North Carolina, places like Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we looked at the the American Association of Planners, uh, plans that had won national awards for comprehensive plans, try to figure out how we wanted to approach the planning process. We spent a lot of time uh, looking at what our skills were and how we wanted to do this and what resources we needed to accomplish the project. Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at what uh, types of information might uh, be gapped uh, that we don't have to be able to complete the project. Um, after we were completing the plan to plan, we moved on to the background and trends. We spent a lot of, we, this is where the land use technical committee came into play. We spent a lot of time looking at what, at the background of our community, what, what the zoning was, where the infrastructure was, where our sewer, where our water was, where our natural features were that we needed to consider, our, our emergency services, our, the things that we needed to consider with community development. Uh, we also spent, because we don't want this plan to be something that is based on past land use patterns or existing land use patterns, we spent a significant amount of time researching the trends in community development that are occurring throughout the country. So looking how commercial development is evolving, how residential development is evolving, how industrial development is evolving. And what we did was we created this planning area profile out of that process that was, that was uh, an informational document that sort of summarize the existing conditions and the, uh, the trends in our community. And then finally, we moved on to the public outreach. And we had community conversations about our values, about our e ideas on growth and development. We looked at concepts for land use. We looked at multiple iterations of the land use map. We've held public hearings. We've held workshops. We've held open houses. We've met with stakeholders. Um, and here we are at the 414th day of the public outreach process on, uh, what, on our public hearing with the decision makers. So key concepts. Out of all this public outreach, we developed these key concepts for the plan. So all the highlights are that, that moving towards uh, compact development patterns. What, we've got a lot of values in this community. and and things like open lands and agriculture and access to recreation, but we also have values like we need a housing supply, we need places to, to have jobs. 
those some of these values don't always uh, work together. And the best way to find compromise between these values is to work towards compact development patterns. So to do that, though, Missoula County needs to be more proactive with our infrastructure because compact development patterns require things like water and sewer and roads. And Missoula County doesn't really manage water, sewer, and roads right now. We do manage roads, I take that back, but we don't really have water and sewer districts in this area. And so we, if we are going to move towards these compact development patterns that we want, we need to be more proactive with our infrastructure. We also need to work on coordination. We're not alone in this. There's another jurisdiction that has a big say in our community, and that's the city of Missoula. We already do a lot of coordination with them, so this plan identifies ways that we can improve upon that coordination. The plan focuses on implementation, and this is important because a plan by itself is just a policy. You have to act on it once it's adopted. And so we've identified different implementation steps that we need to take to try to reach this vision that we've put together in this plan for the community. And finally, we wanted to make it a 40, at a 40,000 foot level, make, make it readable and usable. So this is a general plan. It doesn't get super specific on property about what type of land uses on this in an individual property should occur on, on, on this part or that part. It also is very, fairly general in its descriptions of the land use designations. And this is because we want this plan to be implemented. The implementation will get to the details. The things like our zoning regulations will fine tune the conversations we've had with this land use map. So the new comments that we received on April 8th, we hand delivered to the county commissioners a packet that had all the comments that we have received to date through the planning board public hearing and then afterwards. And that packet included an evaluation, a staff evaluation of those comments. But we've received comments since then as well. And so we wanted to just kind of highlight the topics for you. Um, none of these topics are actually tech really that new. But there's been a lot of comment on the Den Blaker subdivision, which is just off of Waldo Road and um, George Gates Boulevard up in the Y. A number of comments about Grass Valley and the planning board made a change out in the Grass Valley and to the land use designation. So a number of comments about that change. Uh, the, uh, there's been a handful of comments about some property that's just southwest of the airport. It's currently designated residential, sort of surrounded by the city. Um, and then there's been one comment uh, to an area northwest of the airport uh, along Broadway. And you should have all of those comments. We have uh, handed you all of the comments we have received. All right, and Christine's going to talk about the staff report. All right. Um, so, uh, do you want to swap seats, actually? Swap seats. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So, this is just a sort of a summary of. Um, everything that's happened since planning board. We had the three uh, meetings with planning board and they made their recommendation on March 5th. Um, we have this hearing today and then um, the anticipated one on the 25th. The legal ad ran in the Missoulian on the 7th and the 14th and um, we had a number of outreach efforts through the newsletter, um, two websites on Facebook and additional meetings and updates with uh, boards. And in reviewing uh, this project against the growth policy, it was identified as a priority in that um, growth policy as a immediate and high priority um, to update the land use designations and the land use map. And so we, um, it identified goals that were pertinent to the project and we reviewed this project against those goals. Um, so I'll run through those here. Uh, goal one was to conserve vital natural resources. Um, and this project does that um, by designating a majority of the land within uh, designations where uh, priority resources were identified and either protected or um, pro development uh, may be either limited or prohibited in some cases. Um, so that's 87 percent of the planning area is um, either in agriculture, open resource and recreation, working lands or uh, rural residential um, and small ag or in agriculture. Um, and uh, development is focused on just 12.7% of the land. Um, and that's all based on that public comment and um, research that Andrew uh, talked about. And then 
goal four is to reduce Missoula County's contribution to climate change. Um, and this project does that, um, updating the land use map does that by um, encouraging growth in and around that existing infrastructure. So where those roads, sewer and water currently exist or can be easily um, or feasibly expanded. Um, so that compact development is also really encouraged in this plan, um, making for mixed use areas and walkable neighborhoods, limiting um, uh, auto-centric development and pollution that way, um, and reducing those co contributions to climate change. And then we have goal seven, to sustain and promote land and resource-based industries. Um, and so, believe it or not, we so we had existing 64 land use designations in the previous land use map. Um, and for the first time, we're introducing or recommending a designation for agriculture specifically. So somehow in those 64, we missed that, but um, got a lot of public comment that that would uh, be a good resource um, and a good way to protect agriculture. Um, and so that was applied to areas with soils, um, irrigation, tax assessments, and then um, compared with aerial imagery to sort of identify the existing ag acti activity and potential ag activity. And then goal eight is to proactively plan and provide for logical growth of communities while also protecting that rural character that's important to Missoula County residents. Um, and so here in this map, we focus development um, like we've been saying where that infrastructure exists. So um, where those roads, sewer and water um, exist or are located nearby. Um, and then lower densities are recommended where that trio doesn't exist um, and preserves in an attempt to preserve that rural character. Um, and so it's our thinking that the financial and resource efficiencies will be realized by using the infrastructure that's in place today. And sort of piggybacking on that, um, as part, goal number nine is uh, as part of the planning, support the provision of infrastructure and services to and within rural communities. And this is sort of a tricky balance um, because extending that infrastructure can have the potential to change a place um, and increase the density. So um, using that balance to maintain rural character and um, uh, focusing uh, more than enough, so we have these projections about growth and for, expe we're expecting 14,000 new people to the planning area. And um, in this project, we've identified enough area within the planning area to absorb that growth um, while maintaining some protections for agriculture. So um, really working on that balance. Um, and then also emphasizing that implementation um, is vital to making this map work and um, being able to preserve and absor absorb those, uh, those expected new residents. Goal number 10, second to last goal, uh, provide opportunities for a wide range of housing choices, um, especially for those who are homeless or experiencing high costs of housing. Um, and so this map won't fix the affordability or homeless problem in Missoula County, but it does, what it does do is affect supply and type by expanding both of those. Um, so what's encouraged um, has expanded and six designations that are promoted in this map um, allow for the full range of housing types. Um, and then we also have incorporated tools in the lower density areas that um, provide for density bonuses. So having a financial incentive to uh, either cluster development and then um, maybe getting some additional units that way if you're preserving a public good. Um, and then also um, uh, it's sort of shaped in a way that provides flexibility to the market. So there's it's specific and broad, but um, in in the in that way um, does what the the tool is meant to do to um, allow for affordability. And then goal number eleven is to reduce the safety risks and costs associated with wildland fire, flooding, and other hazards. Um, and so, to obviously, developing in the wrong places can lead to uh, public health and safety issues, um, and that drives costs up for the county in addressing and managing, mitigating those hazards. Um, this land use map um, identifies those floodways, floodplains, and elevated fire risk. 
um, as the main hazards in the planning area, and development is steered away from those sites. Um, so those are all the goals. And um, looking at that sort of holistically, we concluded that the update um, to the planning area is warranted and addresses the many goals of the growth policy. And then real quickly, I'm just going to go through some of those changes that the planning board um, voted on and um, we'll probably hear some of those comments today and are echoed sort of throughout the commenting process. Um, so from the why, we got a lot of comment on um, this uh, lot, Dunblaker lot two, um, and the planning board uh, recommended changing it from neighborhood center to rural, uh, rural residential and small agriculture. Sorry, there, yeah. So there was also a name change that you'll see later on that change or that was previously acted on that changed the land use designation, rural residential and agriculture from rural residential and small ag. Um, so that's going to be a little tricky to stay abreast of. But um, yeah, so that is the why. And then the commercial center between Buckhouse Bridge and Blue Mountain Road, there was a request from landowners to expand commercial. And um, uh, the planning board did some expansion, but not as much as the landowner was requesting. And in Grass Valley, there either side of Deshaw Lane, uh, there was a uh, a vote to um, expand the agricultural designation um, to a larger area. And we struck prime from mentions of agricultural soils to just broaden that and be a little more inclusive of agriculture. Um, and then north of the airport, there was a change to um, certain designations from the landowner um, that just uh, further divided the planned neighborhood into working lands and industry. And then northwest of Deshaun Moccasin, uh, there was a change from industry to, uh, did I? Yeah, to neighborhood yes. center, yes. So uh, we'll probably hear more expanded comments on that from the audience, but that is the staff report. Thanks. So here's the draft map. I think most people have probably seen it at this point. Um, I can leave it up on the board as we go through. Um, one last announcement. I, we, I believe it's on the schedule to continue the public hearing to, is it, what's the date? Oh, April 25th, 2 p.m., so it's a week from today at 2 p.m. in this room. And that's all we've got for you. Thank you. Um, and I just want to announce before we open it up for public comment um, that today we have Melody, and I forgot your last name already. Jeffries from Jeffries Court Reporting. Oh, that makes how could I that that makes sense. Um, and she has asked for consent and been given consent to um, interject during comments if people are speaking too quickly or unclearly, um, so that she can get the information clearly in the court record um, for her purposes. Um, earlier, I made it sound like it was Dave's fault that we were going to continue this because uh, he wanted to be here. But I also want to make it clear, um, like when we walked in, we have a huge new stack of public comment um, that we just received. So obviously, we have not had time to take that comment into account. And um, we have read public, you know, the planning board comments and everything. But um, definitely, there are some what sound like areas of concern in this project. And we really will want to take the comment that we hear today and be able to sleep on it and take it into fuller consideration. So, um, and then also Dave does want to, to be part of the, the discussion as well. So, but it wasn't just Dave's fault. It's, it's, a, it's a good idea for us to, to take some time and, and really think about what we have to hear today. So um, with that, I will open public comment for the Missoula Area Mapping Project. Please limit your comment to three minutes. I will be timing you and telling you when your time is up. Please remain respectful and um, courteous to your neighbors and um, just address, address the commission. And this is not uh, a debate forum. It is just commenting on the map. Uh, with that, I will open public comment. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Alan McCormick with Garlington Lana Robinson. I'm here today representing Charlie's Acres LLC. 
owned by Bob Jensen. You have my letter, and I don't want to repeat everything that's in that, particularly with my limited three minutes for this. Uh, thank you for your efforts here. And thanks to Christine and Andrew for all of their efforts as well. It's been an exceptional amount of work. It's a needed update to this growth policy. We've got a lot of designations out there going back to 1998, and they're not all that clear and easy to understand. So I, th I, I value this project, and I think for the most part, you've gotten it right. There's some quibble. Uh, we did have, as, as uh, Andrew and Christine pointed out, 400 and some days of, of public outreach. Uh, the access to information has been exceptional. The opportunities for public participation has been exceptional. But that's what makes it so odd that at the very last minute, the Grass Valley designation got changed from rural agriculture and residential to um, the agricultural designation. The net effect of that is to take it from a one dwelling unit per five acres to a one dwelling unit per 40 acres. And it is small solace that there's a little bit of language in there that suggests that the density bonuses might be awarded for clustering. The current land use designations and the zoning effect in the Grass Valley area have been in effect for decades. That's important. It's important because it allows landowners to make long-term determinations about what to do with their property. It's predictability, and that predictability allows people to make decisions. And so they've had zoning in place, and as you're well aware, most of the county does not. Uh, and so they've been able to rely on those designations for decades now to make their choices of what they're going to do with the property. Going from one dwelling unit per five acres to one dwelling unit per 40 acres uh, is a significant shift, obviously, and it virtually eliminates the kind of clustering that you're looking for. The current zoning designation does allow clustering because it doesn't have a minimum lot size, and that allows great flexibility. So if you're going to target some efforts, I'd ask you to reverse this decision, put it back the way it was so people can still have the long-term understanding and expectations, and focus your efforts on changing the zoning to create carrots, to create the incentives to do what it is that you're looking at without taking away the entitlements that they have now. It's clear the planning board recognized that this was a significant shift and it came very late in the process because they directed the planning department or the county to reach out to the landowners in the area. Unfortunately, despite their best efforts to do that, the effort hasn't worked. And I think you'll hear that from some other folks here. Bob has been personally calling neighbors and folks who have been trying to call neighbors and folks to alert them to this so they can provide public comments. I think you've got more of those and I think you'll, uh, you'll hear from some folks here, but I'm asking you to reverse the decision of the planning board to shift the Grass Valley designations. And if you're reluctant to do so, I would ask that you, you dial this back, and maybe it's even better to dial it back a little bit anyway. Take a look at this entire Mullen Road corridor and see if we can make a little more pinpoint designations on what these need to be. You're at three minutes. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I was perfect. Done, too. Good yeah. job. Thanks a lot. You must have practiced. Um, and as Mr. McCormick did, um, if people could please make sure they state their name for the record uh, before they speak. Thanks. Good afternoon, my name is Shelby Humphreys. I'm a resident of Mallard Way along the Mullen Road corridor. First, I'm amazed at all the effort and planning and research the staff has done. Thank you so much over the last four years, two years? Two, okay. Unfortunately, the timing is that the background and trends phase was before a major flood along Mallard Way, uh, Tower Street also experienced that flood. Mallard Way is downriver from where the Bitterroot and Clark Forks combine. And in 2008, the removal of the Milltown Dam had quite an effect on the river rising and the rate of flow. And we saw and witnessed that in 2018. I'm really encouraged by your added goal of agriculture because it's not only a pr preservation of those 30 year plus neighborhoods, but it's also a preservation of agriculture lands as those soils get eroded and go downriver. My neighbor across the street lost 16 feet of his bank last year in our flood. And what else did I want to add? This is mostly food for thought as you continue with those goal settings that, um, and I'm really happy to see flood as a priority. One house across from my, from my house has been abandoned. The well was flooded. And so no more taxes from that house, unfortunately. And our property values may go down if continued flooding exists. And of course that affects the tax base. Lastly, I just wanna pass out some photographs to give you a real world picture of what it was like for us last year.
And that's all my comment. Thanks for the time. Appreciate everyone. I wish I was here two years ago, but I just got my letter the other day and my house was flooded last year. So <laughs> that's sometimes how it goes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Fred Stout. Thank you uh, for your recent uh, communication notifying us of the Missoula area land use element. Um, I appreciate that you've spent 414 days and shame on me for not being more clued in and perceptive of what was going on but did not know and don't have time to go to uh, read the newspaper for every hearing that is coming about. And since this is your livelihood, understandable, you're working for the community. Uh, parts of it are great, but I think there are some that uh, definitely should be uh, reconsidered. I'm personally opposed to the mapping and the related uh, use designations that it contains. It's an extreme example of total disregard of private property rights, which helped make this country great. And I will direct my comment to one example, although others could be cited, which is the designation of agricultural lands being limited to one house per 40 acres. This is a serious infringement on my right of ownership and a dramatic reduction of the property value which in a lot of farm and ranch ownership is the substantial net worth of the individuals. I am full agreement and respect the need for preserving our agricultural lands and respect owners that put their lands in conservation e easements by their own choice. But I am vehemently opposed to forced takings, which may not be the real legal designation of this, but for me personally it is, by governmental bodies and I believe by, if somehow this infringement is approved and passed and the commissioners uh, that this test of constitutionality may be forthcoming and at least a class action lawsuit will transpire. I object to the designation of the 40 acres because it's a devaluation. It's an infringement on my rights. And my preference is that the current designation of zoning for agriculture and land mapping is sufficient and is acceptable to the owners. We do not need more designation of the legitimacy of smaller designations and subdivision of that agricultural property. And as I say, I appreciate the effort and uh, sorry that I just was informed by the recent letter that I received. Thank you very much for doing that. Otherwise, I would have been in the dark about it. So thank you. Hi, my name's Ed Taylor, and I reside at 3920 Sunrose Drive in Target Range, Montana. I'm here as a Target Range Homeowners Association board member and was a working member of the Target Range Neighborhood Plan. I would like to thank Andrew and Caps and members of the Planning Board and LUTAC for the work that's been done on the land use update proposal. I do have some concerns that the update proposal is seemingly driven by the city, developers, realtors, and other private stakeholders rather than the county residents. I've been following this closely and I'm a little disappointed in the lack of incorporating my public comment and request during the past. I had months, but year and a half. <laughs> uh, the first issue I have with the proposal begins on page four of the proposal labeled the big idea, one community. It states, quote, to its residents, Missoula isn't the county Missoula and the city Missoula, it is one community. Every county resident I asked about this emphasized I live in the county, so I find that to be a little different. 
Many of the neighborhoods and sections, in, in, excuse me, many of the neighborhoods and sections of the study area have been given considerable amount of thought and creative ideas for the future, but I'm critical of the final draft of the proposal as it applies to the target range neighborhood. There are repetitive statements throughout the update proposal suggesting that the document maintains our values, quality of life, view sheds, wildlife corridors, agricultural lands, neighborhood character, meaning of place, and managing the intensity of development, and then lists imperatives I find conflicting. For the lack of time here are just a few. See under in the plan imperatives on page 19, quote, compact development patterns and logical ex expansion of urban services are best strategies, and page 21, proactively plan for extending infrastructure into, quote, and I think this is a Freudian slip, undeserved areas that can support growth. <laughs> uh, where was I here? Wasn't this addressed in the studies and plans recently done by the city, such as the UFTA yearbook and tenure review in 2017? And then on page 19 of the plan, our Missoula growth policy, quote, recognizes prime soils with an urban agricultural overlay that encourages cluster development to help conserve valuable soils. The objectives and actions further reflect the city's committed com commitment to focus development inward and to protect air, soil, water, and natural areas to the greatest extent as possible. The county seems to feel differently. The update also suggests changing zoning and subdivision regulations in the near future. Weren't the zoning and subdivisions regulations just changed not too long ago in the county? The most important adverse statement to target rangers is reference to density bonuses and density incentives. It is glaringly obvious that this land use update proposal is not compatible with the target range neighborhood plan. And you are at three minutes. I'm just finishing up. Thank you. This plan was adopted by the county in 2010. The plan requested some zoning changes, which has never been implemented, and also has some suggested develop, uh, development ideas, such as conservation design, but has no mention of density bonuses or an incentives that the update proposal requests on page 32, 33, 37, and 38. Yes, I understand the update proposal covers an extensive area and all the suggestions do not apply to all parts of the study area equally, but I urge the board to strike from the reference to the target range neighborhood, excuse me, I urge the board to examine the referred pages and comments and request the density bonuses and incentives be stricken from reference to the target range neighborhood as they do not adhere to the adopted target range plan. Thank you. Can I pass these out? I'm Don Evans, the executive director of the Union Gospel Mission, the rescue mission here. We work in the city and we're in the county as well. Uh, I've been here 760 days working. And uh, unfortunately, we just got the, the notice of the letter and the change of zoning. And I, I know it's hard to get it out to everybody. And I'm sad to know there was 414 days of public comment. And I'm just now here. My only concern is that I can't find anywhere in relation to this rezoning uh, and how it may affect our Grace House, which is our Women and Children's Center out on Mullen Road. And the rezoning and, and the verbiage of what will change concerns me because we have this house for those who are experiencing addiction and needing recovery, and we keep the moms with the children to do this. And so we've had the ability to do this out here, and, and I just haven't seen anything that says, okay, we're still good, or is this going to change something for us and how we currently use the property that we've had since 2008. So I would love for no comment right now, obviously, but uh, our phone number is easy, 549-HOPE. If anybody can help me with that, then I would appreciate that. You can just seek out executive director on that. And thank you for all your hard work. Great. Thanks. We'll have staff follow up with you on that, Andrew. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Matt Dreesen, the uh, uh, principal superintendent at DeSmet. Um, 
I've had this discussion with the planning board. I don't know if Andrew needs to put the map up on there. There is an area on the light industrial designation that you have in our school district, which is going to create an unsafe passageway for the students to get from residential to my school by having that light industrial in there. I spoke with the planning board and asked them how we could address that. Um, I was asked to contact all the landowners in the area, so I did contact the landowners in the area in my school district um, and asked them if we could change that to mixed use. If we change that to mixed use, it would allow um, a corridor that would allow safe passage from one residential district, one residential unit through the mixed use to another residential district. And then somehow we have to figure out how to get the kids across Highway 10 without them becoming speed bumps. I don't know that answer, but it has me concerned. Um, we already have residential on that side. I think I got all those letters and everything to the board. I'm assuming that we do. Kim was in town. He's from Wisconsin, and he said he was going to try and visit with Andrew. I know there's a letter, and maybe with Josh on that same issue. They're all in support of that. I think that would be a good move, and I hope that we can get a resolution on that just to make sure that we have safe passage for the kids coming in there. There's one other question I have, and Chrissy just said this, and it my heart stopped. It said that you're working north of the airport and putting in industrial. I heard that. I don't know if that's what you meant. I'm north of the airport. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that, but I want to just, if we can visit with that at a later date, if that's okay to make sure I'm not, I didn't miss something there. That's my question. Thank you. Got it all? All right. Hi, my name is Sam Martin. I'm here in Missoula. I'm a real estate broker. And my question to the board is, how are you going to compensate these landowners when you insert the zoning on their property that's going to devalue it to 30% of what it is now, or 40? And are you going to uh, uh, basically place a conservation easement on it? And then we've got parcels from 40 acres, 50 acres, 640 by some of my colleagues, another 80 here, another 350 there. And I mean, that's Dayshaw, that's Mullen Road, it's right in the heart. And these property are less than a mile from city sewer. How are you gonna plan for that? You already got a problem at the intersection of Super Walmart, Mullen Road and uh, Reserve. How are you going to address that? I think you should look from the city who really wants the infill, and I think you should be looking out and not going clear to Frenchtown, not going to these other people. And all, all people are asking for is one to two acres or five acres or something like that to do it, and you're going to come in and try and restrict clients of mine and colleagues of their land values. That's not going to work. I can tell you that right now. So thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Is there any further public comment? Hi, I'm Samantha Hartman, and I am a member of the East Missoula community. Um, similar to some others, I just became informed of the area planning, and I thank you guys. I think it's great. I am here because I, in reviewing the map, realized that uh, the area surrounding me has been designated with the live make designation, which I think is great. My block, the 600 block of Speedway was excluded from that and is currently just rural. Um, and so I am here to request that the 600 block of Speedway Ave is added to the live make designation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Bridges from the East Missoula Community Council. As the chair, I would like to support what Samantha just brought to you. I understand and have already shown this to Dave Strohmeyer and to Andrew so they're aware of what Samantha is talking about. What they were doing in East Missoula was following the streets and Staples stops at Speedway 
they followed it around the 600 block uh, and picked it up on Montana and carried forth. What we're asking is simply to cut across property lines at the 600 block of Speedway Montana and include that in, and I don't think that should be a problem. Aside from that, I want to thank Andrew and Christine so much for, and their staff, so much for this project that they have done to help preserve our unique character in East Missoula and giving us this very unique live make designation. We're really grateful for that. Um, I, for one, understand that we will soon, in the near 10 years, uh, be looking at annexation from the city by being able to take this step in having this growth plan cover this with the live make it makes our unzoned areas of East Missoula easier to negotiate with the residents we were looking at a big time fight and we know that being annexed we would be zoned so we are grateful that the community has the county has stepped in caps has stepped in and provided us with a creative and very effective manner of in the future being able to zone our unzoned areas this is our this growth plan is our first step we will be following through with zoning and this this helps take away the fight you just deflated the balloon so thank you very much hello my name is marcia hauck and i live in grass valley on Malone road and i have only just received one letter inviting me to this meeting and i'm so happy to be here i want to thank you for the work that you're doing i have a different perspective than many i'm a gerontologist i i have just attended the montana gerontology association meeting in helena and you need to realize as a whole group that housing is a big deal for older people. And having somebody to be near who could live on the same land or near them on the same land, whose family who could help help them as they age is, is going to be really important. Other cities, cities and areas are allowing more accessory dwelling units. Because of this, it's extremely important to think of. Now, I'm, I'm also a baby boomer. You can see that probably. There's a lot of us, and I'm on the leading edge of baby boomers. Um, it, it's going to be important to think, can we not take our small pieces, five acre, I'm in one on one that's just under five acres, and put a family member unit on that? instead of saying all oh, this land is going to have to stay agriculture i think agriculture is a great designation for our area yeah but there are people out there that would appreciate being able to put another unit belonging to their family on their piece of land and i just want you to think about that because it isn't we're not going to go away easy we never have been easy and we're not going to go away easy now and we we need to think about um adus even for our area thank you good afternoon i'm bonnie buckingham i'm the executive director of the community food and agriculture coalition and i'm here this afternoon to voice my gratitude for the long and um sometimes tedious, I think, hard process that went into this, especially um, with Andrew and Christine. So thank you so much for the many hours that you did put into this. There was extensive community input in this plan, and I'm here to voice my support um, for adopting this into the growth policy. As you know, the Community Food and Ag Coalition has spent a dozen or so years working to keep the conversation on agricultural soils conservation at the forefront of planning in Missoula County. And for the first time in this um, long uh, conversation, we feel that we are actually making some headway with this land use mapping element. Um, the designation specifically recognizing the need to conserve agricultural land shows the commitment on the part of the county to conserve our best soils and recognize agriculture as the asset that we know it to be. 
During the recent open space bond um, and levy campaign last fall, folks overwhelmingly supported the bond, which included funding for the protection of agricultural land. Um, I feel that this land use map works to highlight some of the areas most at risk of development and most viable for agriculture in the future. These tools combined will help maintain our agricultural heritage and provide for a stable, resilient food supply when we need it. Along with other planning documents, such as the Climate Ready Communities process, our Missoula, the city's growth policy, and the Missoula County growth policy, along with the open space bond and levy, um, we as a community are developing tools that will provide mechanisms for the conservation of agricultural lands into the future. Um, this land use map complements these other policies and can provide a specific planning strategy for growth. As recommended by the report, there is now a need to put this element into the growth policy, update the zoning map, and create zoning that aligns with the land use designations and update subdivision regulations accordingly. Our hope is that you will adopt this element into the growth policy for Missoula County, and we can begin to explore and adopt the mechanisms needed to protect our most vital soils across the Missoula Valley. CFAC is in support of the planning board's changes to the mapping element to include critical areas in the Grass Valley around Laval and Butler Creek corridors, preserving as many acres of ag soils and the wildlife habitat that it supports. There are a few areas of agriculture um, very prominent within neighborhoods, and I know there's been discussion about the need for more specific language regarding ag operations in some of the areas um, for the development that um, currently supports small local farms. Uh, most specifically, as was mentioned before, the target range and open orchard homes areas west of reserve. This community has been working very diligently to be recognized as an agricultural center for Missoula. There are more than 20 farms, two farmers markets um, every week during the growing season and several farm stands and you pick operations scattered throughout the neighborhood. Um, uh, there are at three minutes. Oh, it is. Oh, well, then I will skip ahead and say um, I just think there are some additional policies and zoning that need to occur after this, and CFAC will be active in helping to implement the um, elements that are within this map. And we urge you to, we urge you strongly to support this and adopt it into the growth policy. Thank you. Okay, hi. Um, my name is Bruce Benson. I farm Benson property at 7th and Reserve and 301 North Davis Street, which are in the Missoula County. I have been following this project because it has impact to continuing the use of uh, this property as farmland. One huge issue for our farm is wildlife, specifically deer damage. I have worked with the Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Department for the past 20 years when the deer first started coming in. We tried many ways and have been basically unsuccessful. They um, really have damaged our crops. Um, this document addresses um, wildlife as something to encourage. Does that mean there will be an allowance uh, for predators as mountain lions and wolves, which can also prey on uh, dogs, cats, and children? Current policy of the fish, wildlife, and parks appears to be remove these predators from the urban area. The wildlife part of this document needs to be studied more in a more comprehensive way. This plan does not give adequate uh, attention to transportation. Any additional growth will increase demands for adequate roads. Being next to um, capacity burden reserve street makes me aware that there is no real plan to move additional traffic through this valley. The urgency to update the, a transportation plan is now, not in a few years. I believe that planning is very important. The planning staff has been helpful. 
Decisions you make will require a commitment to follow through. And thank you. Afternoon. My name is Leslie Cheetah, and I'm a property owner at 10825 Mullen Road in the Grass Valley area. I appreciate the opportunity to comment today on the proposed changes by the Missoula Area Mapping Project under the Missoula Area Land Use Element to designated sections of Mullen Road and the Mullen Road Corridor to agriculture and the restriction for landowners to one house per 40 acres in those sections. This deprives landowners of the freedom to choose how to use their property and severely limits its value. During the past two years, hundreds of dwellings have been built within just a few acres on Mullen Road across from the Walmart store, less than seven miles from our property. And yet this proposal would force property owners around us to limit the number of dwellings to one per 40 acres. This unfair restriction devalues the land and infringes on the property rights of landowners in the area along Mullen Road in the Grass Valley section under these proposed designations. I'm asking the commissioners and members of the mapping project to please reconsider this violation of property right owners for the landowners in the Grass Valley area, which restrict them from putting one dwelling per 40 acres and remove it back to the current provision of one dwelling per five acres. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tori Ritter. I'm a wildlife biologist with the Montana Department of Fish, Wildlife and Parks. Uh, I just wanted to start today by thanking Andrew and his team. Um, they really engaged with us from the very beginning to make sure that fish and wildlife habitat values, connectivity and movement in the Missoula area was incorporated into this whole process. Um, and it's been really great working with them. And we're very happy with the, the resulting land use map and element. And so we just want to put our support behind it and hope that you adopt the land use map and element um, as they are proposed. Uh, just to quickly kind of outline the way we approached this is we gathered a group of fish and wildlife biologists that are specific to the Missoula area and more regionally in western Montana. And basically we just poured over maps of the Missoula Valley and came up with what we call uh, ecologically important areas. And we outlined nine of those ecologically important areas in this rather lengthy document that was uh, our original comments to the, uh, the first land use map and element that was proposed. Um, Andrew and his team were able to accommodate quite a bit of our comments into the land use map and the, and the elements. And we really think those changes reflect the importance of some of these, these areas. Uh, Missoula really sits at the heart of a lot of large intact ecosystems, the Rattlesnake Wilderness, Sapphire Mountains, um, the Lolo National Forest, Selway Bitterroot, and then all of these major river corridors, they all come together with Missoula at the center. So really, not only is the Missoula Valley and then the entire Missoula area within this mapping important wildlife habitat on its own for creatures that are you know, raising young and foraging, it's also really critically important for creatures being able to move between those major large ecosystems. So in that regard, we came up with these ecologically important areas, not only as wildlife habitat themselves, but also as these moving corridors that will allow creatures large and small to move between those major large ecosystems. And it's really that landscape connectivity that allows for long-term population viability for a lot of these species. So if you're really interested in, I, um, I'm assuming you've been supplied one of these. If not, I have three hard copies here as well um, that I can hand out. But these really are just meant to be as kind of as a guide moving forward as to where are these critical wildlife areas. 
And I just want to emphasize that it's, it's not just about protecting species that people like to photograph or bird watch or things like that. This is about maintaining a healthy environment that not only contributes to aesthetics and to a way of life for people that like outdoor recreation and like hunting, fishing. It's also about maintaining ecological services, flood attenuation, sediment retention, and uh, you know, recreational opportunities, reducing human wildlife conflict, all of those kind of things can all come together when, when, you, when you allow wildlife areas to, to move through a city, to allow that permeability and that connectivity between ecosystems that Missoula kind of sits at the middle of. Uh, so I just really wanted to emphasize that that's where we were coming from with our comments, and we are really happy with the changes that were made. Um, and we are available. We have a whole team of wildlife biologists, fish biologists, land use managers, and we're always available to help work through discussions, work through issues, anything that may be coming up uh, as this is implemented in the future. So please feel free to call us, email us. You can text me even in any time if you want. Uh, we, we, we really want to be engaged with the process. So thank you for your time. Thank you. And we thank uh, your agency for the extensive amount of time that they put into commenting on this and, and engaging with staff. That was very helpful. So thank you. And did you want any of these hard copies? Is, is it yeah. is it the one with all the maps and everything? Yes. Do you need one? I've got one. I think I do. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Further public comment? Good afternoon. My, my uh, name is Jim Cusker. I'm from uh, Grass Valley, um, been there for 80 some years. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, extend a special thanks um, to Andrew and his crew uh, for the process that, that, first of all, for the process that, that you used in generating this map. Um, I think Jillian meetings where we could uh, uh, <laughs> give our input maps that we could put tractors on if we thought that there should be agriculture, a house if we uh, uh, thought that it ought to be uh, uh, residential. Uh, and uh, I consider this, uh, this map uh, an outline for effective stewardship on the part of, uh, of Missoula County. Um, because uh, everyone who contributed to um, putting this map together uh, has realized uh, that there are uh, some very special resources that must be protected. Uh, and many, many thanks for uh, recognizing that agriculture, uh, agricultural land, is one of those important resources. Uh, there are 16 of the elements, and five of them uh, involve uh, agriculture of one size or another. Um, no, it is uh, uh, certainly true uh, that landowners do have the, uh, the option, if they want to protect their land, uh, as have I, and place that property in a conservation easement. Uh, there are times, however, uh, when government has had to step in and say, we recognize this as an extremely valuable resource, uh, hence, you can't do this or you can't do that. High water last year and I took another acre or so from the river bank of our ranch. I can't do anything about that. But I go along with that because I realize how important that water resource is. And I would suggest that the passage of uh, this, uh, uh, this proposal uh, by the commissioners uh, will certainly aid uh, in protecting uh, yet another very valuable resource, and that's agricultural land. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peggy Morrison. I'm here as president of the Target Range Homeowners Association to uh, present to you a, a motion that was 
presented by the executive board the other night and passed. On Tuesday, April 16th, 2019, the Target Range Homeowners Board adopted the following motion regarding the draft land use map update. In 2010, the Missoula County Board of County Commissioners approved the Target Range Neighborhood Plan. The approved plan updated the comprehensive plan use, comprehensive, tongue tied, not, not a good thing for a teacher. The comprehensive plan land use designations for the area included in the Target Range Neighborhood Plan as shown in map 16 of the plan. And I have a copy of this for the commissioners along with the map that's being referred to here. The Target Range Homeowners Board requests that you make the following two changes to the draft land use map update that is before you today to accurately reflect the updated comprehensive plan land use designations. One, the neighborhood plan shows more detail in terms of which areas are zoned for one dwelling unit per acre and which areas are zoned for two dwelling units per acre. Map 16 on page 95. Those distinct boundaries should be shown in the proposed land use designation for rural, residential, and small agriculture map, rather than combining both into the proposed density designation, which states, residential density ranges between one unit per acre and two units per acre. The distinction is very important because of the resources identified in the neighborhood plan as at risk. In, oh gosh, it has to be me. Excuse me. I thought I turned it off. I thought you were gonna answer it. <laughs> yeah, well, if they want me, they can call back. <laughs> I think I probably should at this point just sit down and forget about it. Anyway. Uh, the distinction is very important because of the resources identified in the neighborhood plan as at risk, including important egg soils, riparian areas, steep slopes, and open space counters, cornerstones, the aquifer beneath the entire neighborhood, and the inner irrigation infrastructure. These at risk resources should be protected by using the land use tools identified in the neighborhood plan. The same proposed land use designation for rural, residential, and small agriculture also states, density bonuses may be available if development is clustered to avoid important natural landscapes and waterways, agricultural lands, fish and wildlife habitat, and movement corridors, or if providing public facilities, such as public access or trails. Density bonuses are an anathema to the residents of Target Range and could easily cause much more harm than good. You are at three minutes. I'm in the neighborhood plan. We proposed protection of the resources just mentioned by the use of land use tools such as conservation design and through recommended zoning changes. The statements in the zoning recommendations clearly state the total number of dwellings allowed by zoning on a parcel does not change with the use of land use tools. In other words, no density bonuses or reduction. Thus, it will be important that the proposed land use designation for rural residential and small agriculture make reference to the target range neighborhood plan for guidance on what is allowed in terms of intensity in target range. And I have copies for you, um, along with a copy of the map. Any other public comment?
Good afternoon. I'm Pat Nagy Swartz. I'm a Meadows West landowner. Uh, that's the Y area. And um, I think you hear a lot of fear in the voices of people. I recognize that this is a policy plan, but the narrative makes it clear that it's a policy directed for guidance of the decisions that will be made. So even though it's presented to us as a policy, I think a lot of fear you hear in the voices of the people making their presentations is that we see it down the road as a regulation. Uh, I understand that you have got a lot of comments and, and I believe that one of my comments, which you're going to find is very lengthy, uh, but very detailed because I'm uh, dealing with the issue of Denblecker Lot 1 and 2 not being within the uh, declarative covenants of the Meadows West. And so all of the detail, if you haven't seen the, the letter yet, then my point regarding the fact that Denblecker Lot 1 and 2 is supported by the evidence that I present to you in my letter. I also want to make a point about one of the things this plan that I don't see that it has addressed is putting some of the onus back on the city of Missoula. A lot of this plan deals with population that's coming down the road. And Missoula already has, the city of Missoula within that area already has the infrastructure available to take care of the transportation, the septic, and the water. But Missoula is reluctant to build up in the air. And it's time for Missoula, because we already have the infrastructure there, to build up in the air the city of Missoula with uh, high rises, lobbies, and elevators. And instead, they've been allowed to use up all the land that they had with these strip structures of two and three story that are not going to accommodate the population that the planning committee has recommended. I also just want to make the statement that uh, after you read our comments, I want to know from Andrew if the comment period is closed. Oh, I'm sorry. I will say though that the comment period will not be closed when we continue a hearing. Um, comments stays open and. Oh, okay. So we we have a public hearing coming up, April twenty fifth, at two p.m. in this room, and then the public comment period stays open. At that point, we will determine whether we want to close public comment and make a decision, or if we would okay. continue. All more. right. But at so this hearing, from this hearing to the next hearing, public comment will remain open. Okay. So I encourage you then to uh, consider very clearly, since the Meadows West already has covenants that cover all of the land within the exterior boundaries, uh, we do have one commercial tract of land within the exterior boundaries of Meadows West, and that was provided for in the original covenants from 1979. And affirmed and supported by the 1986 Missoula County litigation against the developers. The rural residential and agriculture designation for Meadows West is appropriate. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Fred Stewart. I live in the Target Range area. I'm a member of the Target Range Board of Directors, and I've been involved with this project a long time. And I want to take a moment to uh, thank Andrew and the staff for all the time that they spent reaching out to people, having meetings that were not always pleasant, maybe, but they were always welcomed, and I appreciate that. I sent in two comments earlier, and the responses, I don't think, answered my comments. So I'm just going to very quickly tell you what those were. I made the comment that I wanted to know which document takes precedence in a project review, this land use plan update, or the target range neighborhood plan when there are different criteria or restrictions apply to a subdivision. The staff response to my comment was, both documents will be referred to as projects in the area are brought forward. This update will provide broad guidance and the target range neighborhood plan provide more site specific guidance. To me, that wasn't really an answer to my question about which one takes precedence. 
the planning board said they would follow the staff recommendation so there was no change. My second comment was similar. Uh, the neighborhood plan uses the term conservation design and does not call for the use of density bonuses. The staff response to my comment was, density bonuses incentivize the protection of public goods and may be available in the update, but they are not required. Okay, but that's still not an answer in terms of which one takes precedence, and the planning board decided to follow the staff recommendation with no change. So those are two comments that I would like some clarification about which takes precedence when we get into subdivision review. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? My name is Steve Bidlake, and uh, I'm a property owner from, uh, oh, I've got property on both sides of Moccasin Lane, on both ends of Moccasin Lane as well. Uh, I have property uh, that consists of old pulp mill ground. Uh, clear out the Mark here Lane for, and, and also along Pulp Mill Road and Mullen Road. Uh, we primarily are farm and ranch in this property. However, I, I have to say I object to this 40 acre per resident. Uh, uh, and if you go out in any of the area that I have property, you'll find big pieces of property with somebody's house in the middle and there's nothing on it. You can call it ag. They're not growing anything but weeds. And the rest of us are having to deal with that on property that we do try to farm. The other thing I'd like to bring up, we have been involved in uh, a couple of uh, small subdivisions on property that we determined uh, was not going to work for us as ag property. We haven't done a lot of this, but... Uh, we do have some property now that we believe uh, would be better as residential in our area than it is as ag ground. And as you grow toward Frenchtown, you're going to have to have uh, places to build these houses or put in these mobile parks uh, or areas where people can live and get to the services they need. And uh, it's not gonna happen on one house on 40 acres. Uh, we, uh, we have property that we're, we're spraying, we're cutting weeds. I can show you round bills of uh, nothing but weeds on property we own that we go through and cut down just to get rid of it and uh, bail it eventually to burn it uh, and we can't get this stuff to grow. I've got people from Senex, uh, uh ag people coming in trying to help us with this, figure out what can we do to get this thing to grow something. Largely that's on pulp mill ground uh, area but uh, that we're having these problems with. But, uh, you know, I, I agree with the compact housing deal Put, put more houses on smaller ground to, to uh, keep some open space, keep some ag ground. But, uh, and I do agree with some of the comments I've heard that <coughs> uh, you're, you're going to be devaluing property that we've paid for. And, and I'm not one of these ranchers that inherited all this property. I went and bought it, paid cold hard cash for it. And, uh, you know, what we're talking about here is taking value that I have uh, with nothing to uh, offset it with. And, Thanks. and you are at three minutes. Okay. 
Well, that's all I got to say. It's, uh, uh, I do want to just express my objection to this one house on 40 acres of ground. So thank you. Any more public comment? <clears throat> My name is Tom Alsacker. I live at 11666 Mullen Road. It's actually the last piece of property that I own of what once was a bigger piece of property so i really don't have a dog in this fight i'm i'm out of it but i have fought the fight i put pieces of property together to build a bigger piece and i had a vision for it and i guess my message was that as i put these properties together over 50 years uh, the only thing i ever looked at was the future not knowing what the future was. I had an idea. But the only thing I really looked at was groundwater. That was the only thing that was pressing. You had to, if you ever wanted to do something, you had to know what the groundwater was. So I bought these properties based on that, knowing that someday they could be resold because the groundwater was down far enough that this could happen. My intent at the time was that's what I like to do. I had a job that I could afford to take care of this. I could afford to subsidize this farm and operation. And I intended to leave it to my family for that same purpose. I found out that what you want to do does not always happen. And uh, did they have not the desire or the jobs that could afford to do what I could do? But I had to change directions, and I found out that over time, the rules had changed. The land I thought I owned, I didn't own. I was severely encumbered by entities and rules and things that had come along in the meantime. And I needed to do something different. I found out in doing that, it cost a lot of money, a lot of time to get it done. Eventually, I got it done. And I guess my message is that there might be, there were some folks in here that, you know, have ideas of what they want to do with their line, but land, but things do change. And, you know, you've got to have a way out. These things encumber it. I believe it's a taking of my rights. The last five acres that I built on recently, Big mistake. Uh, in all honesty, I shouldn't have built in Missoula County. I should have sold that piece of ground and moved someplace else. Uh, I thought I knew all the rules after all this stuff, and getting that job done was a trip through hell. And I don't push that on anybody, and I just want everybody to have an open mind about where they're going with this thing and what happens here, whether you guys lay a layer of something on it or FEMA lays a layer of something on it. Um, it all has an effect down the road and you got to leave them a way out that isn't something that's a, such a burden they can't get out from under it. And um, with that, I guess I've said enough. Just so everybody knows, clapping is not allowed at public hearings. I'm uh, Dick Lucher from the Frenchtown Valley there, and I've been out in that valley 70 years plus, and uh, I'm the same way. I didn't inherit the ranch. I bought it. I bought the land. And uh, this 40 acres that you guys are talking about kind of makes it tough for us older guys now, after we've been in it all of our life, we wanted to do something with, I had some plans down the road here, but the 40 acres won't work, guys and gals. But uh, 
I don't know what else to tell you. I've, I'm, uh, I'm from the Lozell. I got land from the Lozell land lane, clear back behind Frenchtown, and uh, I bought some of the pulp mill land, paid hard cash for it, developed it. It was dry land. It's all irrigated now. It's all producing. But again, I can't sell it to anybody with a 40-acre track. It costs too much money to take care of this land. So that's all I got to say now that I appreciate you guys maybe change something for us. Thank you. Any other public comment? Last call for public comment for today. Okay. Uh, seeing that there is no other public comment, um, it sounds like we will continue this until April 25th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in this room. Public comment will remain open until that time. You can email um, staff for the BCC email to have those entered into the record and considered. Um, is there any other business to come before the commission? All right. No? Okay. Uh, we'll adjourn. Thanks.